All right, everyone. So fourth and fifth graders, you should have finished um, drawing a contour line drawing using the grid technique. Um, you should have noticed your accuracy in how um, how everything is co the correct numbers here and it looks accurate you can look at that picture to see if it looks accurate too and look at your pencil um, traced drawing and then your big drawing that you drew there okay so the next thing that we're going to be doing if you turn the page it says you should have a portrait that is accurate on your 9 by 12 paper without grid lines. Instead of having to erase all of these grid lines, because that takes a lot of, a lot of time, instead what we're going to do is we're going to actually trace this onto a clean piece of paper. So get out a clean piece of paper, and I recommend taping your um, original drawing to a piece uh, uh, to a window and then taping a another piece of paper directly over it all right so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little um, drawing here with my light box All right, so I finished tracing my um, finished large drawing portrait of Ida B. Wells onto a nice clean sheet of paper. I want to make sure that this nice clean sheet of paper gets put into a safe place so that it doesn't get smudged or anything like that. So I would suggest that you keep this back in your um, art folder so that it is nice and safe. For this next part, you're going to be needing your art journal, your regular pencil, your black 600 pencil, is it 09? Six of them. Your blending stump. Your gummy eraser, which if you haven't taken out of your container, make sure you take it out of the container. You'll need your regular eraser. Another useful thing to have right now is a piece of tissue or um, like tissue paper or um, just a tissue, either one will work well. Open up to the page after this, to this page. All right. So now today we're going to be learning more about value. Okay. Um, also, I will recommend if you are still struggling with the whole getting your portrait drawn and it just doesn't look accurate and you're really, really just at a point of frustration, another choice um, that you have is you can try and trace just using your um, iPad, um, put the paper over the iPad, um, put the settings up to its brightest setting and trace over the picture um, of your person. Um, so if you need that, I have copies of all of the um, pictures of the faces on Seesaw. All right, so let's go ahead and start with value. So the first thing we're going to be using is we're just going to use our regular pencil, okay? 
So we're going to be doing a value scale. A value scale goes, you can do from dark to light or light to dark, either way, okay? Let's go ahead and do it just with our pencil. So push as hard as you possibly can using your regular pencil without breaking the pencil. Now push less hard. Okay, this is where you're trying to fill the whole space up without pressing super hard. And this next one, you're gonna go even lighter, softer. This next one, barely even making a mark. Another thing you can do at this point is you can start to use your blending stump. Your blending stump is going to be a super useful tool for blending and making things look ultra smooth. It also will pick up value and you can draw with it. The very important thing is to be very, very careful with the tip of your blending stump. This is actually just wrapped up paper and it's very, very fragile. If you push too hard on the tip of your uh, blending stump, it will just collapse in on itself. So always use the edge of your blending stump unless you are getting into those fine, fine details, and then just use the very lightest of touches with the um, tip of your blending stump. So I'm putting my blending stump and getting some value here, and I'm just sort of smoothing that whole area out. And then I'm starting to bring some of that value into here. And it's hard to see in this um, in the camera, but I've brought some lighter value in. If you want to, you can pick your blending stump up and you can write something. Hi. Okay. Uh, so that's how we're going to be using our blending stump. All right. So let's now test the difference between making our our um, regular pencil and our dark pencil. Now, if you're a lefty like me, I recommend going like from this dark to light like this way. But if you're a righty, you might want to go from dark to to dark to light that way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just using my pencil and just using the pressure. Go ahead and, and kind of make that. And then with this. I'm gonna try it out again. You'll notice how much darker this pencil is. If you use that blending stump, always, I, I say like you can either start in your darkest or start in your lightest, but um, be really careful because if you blend it all together, then you lose that scale. You can always kind of clear off your blending stump a little bit. So if you start in the lightest spot and you kind of go to the darker spots, then you don't really risk bringing over any value. And then, but see if you bring the value right there. I didn't really like that. So now I can use my gummy eraser to pick up some of that value. Now, the gummy or kneaded eraser is really nice because it doesn't leave any of those nasty little um, eraser shavings. You can shape it however you like, and it also picks up color by just pressing on things. Okay, it's a very useful, you can still like use it like a regular eraser and, and do that, but I think it's still really cool to um, it, it, it's really nice for getting those fine details and making it really smooth with your uh, blending. All right. So now we're going to try and practice um, drawing your with a blending stump here. Okay. Or not with a blending. Blend, that's what this one we, we blended. Okay. We're going to practice drawing value, adding value. Okay, so when you think about a ball, 
even if you were to make your eraser into a ball okay and you looked at your the ball and there's there's a light um, hitting it so see from my perspective there's a light hitting right here and so you can see there's some light hitting it and then there's a shadow there's a cast shadow there's also a shadow for the object so I like to always start with my lighter pencil first because the darker pencil is a lot harder to erase and um, we just want to make sure that we leave some space here so I'm gonna like leave this part here this section almost like a little circle I'm gonna leave that highlight alone okay and then I'm gonna fill this with a color just a one value and then I say okay well that I at least have like two values here but I notice when I look at something like a ball it starts to get darker as it gets further away from the light so i'm actually going to be making it a little darker and it's like um since it's a circle it's actually kind of rounded you know because it, it's got that sphere shape now i can go ahead making sure my blending stump is nice and clean before i start Okay. Then I use my blending stump right around the edges of my highlight first to make that nice and smooth. And then I'm bringing that down into my darker shadow and blending it nicely. I can start to do the cast shadow by literally just pulling the shadow from there. Okay, now I like the way this looks, but I think I can make it a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna take just the lightest of my uh, uh, lightest touch of my dark pencil. And I'm gonna do just a little bit of a dark value here and a little bit of a dark value that's like directly below it. going to blend those in and I left a little tiny light right like here because if you actually look at a at a ball it does actually reflect light back up all right so now you can also draw with picked up value from your blending stump this is something like if you're drawing like hair, if you're wanting to just kind of get a smooth area, okay? But you can notice it's super duper light. All right, the last skill I wanna show you is transferring so i'm actually it says fill with a dark pencil but i want to go ahead and fill half of it with a dark pencil like i'm going to just, just sort of get all that value and i'm also going to fill with my lighter pencil this is an o2 let's see two two hb okay and different values in this one I honestly like this is a super dark pencil right it's like a six so if you think of like that um, it doesn't have the B so I'm not exactly sure usually it's on an HB um, scale or a B scale um, so this pencil doesn't really tell us exactly how dark it is but it's super dark all right now we're going to be using our tissue okay so you're going to use tissue or tissue paper okay and i'm going to pick up my value so i'm going to try it with this one and transfer it now you see how light it is okay so pick up the value of my dark pencil and transfer it it's a lot darker 
when you transfer with a um, tissue, what you end up doing is you get this nice dark value or like regular, it's called a ground, just like a nice base color, which is gonna be really great for skin, okay? Now, I recommend going ahead and on Seesaw, pulling up a picture of your person, you know, and you can also just look at your picture here, um, and you're trying to get the lightest values and the darkest values. Another thing you can do is right down here, you can try and kind of create that scale of what would her skin look like. Well. Her skin is probably going to be like, I'm going to start with like that value. Okay, so another nice thing to do to practice is to practice on this sheet. Okay, so this is a great sheet to start practicing on because we're not going to be using it since this is the grid drawing picture. So, if I have this and I have my picture up, okay, I can, first of all, I'm going to transfer some, and I think I'll use, um, I'll use the edge of my paper here to do the transfer, because remember, we're going to cut this edge off. So, I want to start with that light value, and I'm going to transfer first. Okay, and this just helps. And remember, to this whole week, this this whole week we're just practicing. Okay, we're not gonna touch our actual drawings yet until in, for another week. Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and get like one of these sections nice and dark, and we're just practicing. Okay, this is so you can get familiar with how things work. Okay. I pick it up with my tissue and I'm just going to go ahead and go over the whole thing. If I'm not picking up enough, I might have to draw it again or add more transfer there. Okay. Now you might be wondering, like, but you just covered the whole area with like a gray level. Well, you can always use your eraser and shape it. And like, go back in and erase the whites of the eyes. And there's like highlights in her nose. So maybe you'll add the highlight in her nose. Okay. Um, there's like a little bit of a highlight in the forehead. Maybe I'll add that. In lip. I'll add that. Okay, so that's just a good starting point. Okay, I also might want to practice drawing like just using my pencil, right? So if I add some value to her eyes, and I'm being really careful about where I press it, how how hard I press it. Okay, so some things are just going to need more value. Like, I'm never going to get the right transfer for her hair. So if I, like, use the edge of my pencil, and I get, like, that whole area, and I'm not going to do the whole area, but I'm just going to do, like, that, and then I use my blending stump, I can blend that together. Can you see how that makes all those annoying pencil marks go away? Do the same here and just kind of smooth those things out with my blending stump. And remember, if you don't like it, like maybe I'm like, oh, that I made it a little too dark. And just literally pick up some of that value. My blend, my, my kneaded eraser. There's also like little sections here that I might want to like kind of pick up. I can also use my other er eraser and draw sort of like some squiggly lines for her hair. And I can use my dark pencil 
Add some squiggly lines. I'm trying to make sure that I'm adding those squiggly lines in the areas that are dark. So I look at here and I say, okay, well, this area is really dark and this area is really dark. But this area is kind of lighter. So I'm not going to put the dark pencil up here. I'm just going to use my lighter pencil. And like here, I'm not going to ever use my dark pencil on her skin, but I might use it on her eye. And like where there's a darkest spot. Sometimes it helps to find the darkest spots by squinting at your picture. When you squint at it, you can start to see where the dark spots pop out. Okay, and then you just use your blending stump to blend those marks together. Remember to clean off your blending stump by just kind of brushing it off on the side. You can also just bring some of this value. So like I have a lot of value here. I might go ahead and start bringing some of that value down. All right, so this is, again, just practice. I'm going to keep on practicing, okay? And seeing what I like, what I might need to work on, okay? So there's some things, you know, and I think it's better to practice on this thing than on your, your um, final copy. But the nice thing about having this too, is that if you mess up on your final copy, you can go ahead and trace it again and start over. Notice I also didn't draw like a bunch of her facial features. Like I did not draw the big line of where her, her shadow is. I didn't draw where her nose goes. So I'm gonna draw that with value, right? This value is going to make it a lot better. When I add it, value to it like this, as opposed to a um, dark pencil mark, um, it looks a lot smoother and nicer. All right, so. We're going to be exploring and doing more of this during class. Um, but remember, this is just our your practice week, and I will be able to answer questions during class. Um, if you ever have any questions beyond what you you have here, please remember you can always message me, and I would be happy to help.